the biggest wrestling star on the planet, just returned to WWE? Will he main event WrestleMania? Will he right the wrongs of his past? Or will he rip another locker room apart? And it seems... Breaking news! Our truth has returned to WWE. Oh, that's all. That's all the returns that happened on this show. <gasps> just one more thing. Because Randy Orton came back too, from out of... Well, from out of being heavily referenced on the Go Home episode of Raw. Uh, but yeah, yeah, our truth, Randy Orton. Wow, what a, what a show, what a show. <laughs> but just one more thing. Closer. I know, I know, we all just want to talk about one thing, mainly because the rest of Survivor Series was mostly filler. No killer. But there wasn't a kickoff match, and the show was a glorious 2 hours 54 minutes in total, so it won't take long. Just remember, keep checking WrestleTalk.com throughout the day for all the up-to-date minute developments and reactions to that CM Punk news. The show opened with WAR GAMES! WOMEN! Where randomly assorted babyfaces Charlotte Flair, Shotzi, Bianca Belair and Becky Lynch took on Damage control in a four versus four matchup. Commentary pointed out this is Charlotte Flair's first ever War Games match. She's presumably missed them so far because they require her to actually take bumps. Her and Becky provided the face's main story throughout the match. The lifelong frenemies showed a lot of tension up until the end. Remember, the last time they met was in that awkward month where they reportedly shoot hated each other following charlotte's controversial belt drop segment on smackdown but they had a cool payoff when they finally embraced teaming together to take out their opponents charlotte's performance for me though feels so lackluster these days she was nowhere near the fiery passion or intensity that becky brought to those moments even when flair was doing a moonsault off the top of the cage she looked kind of bored the main story on the heels side was that bailey is to be trusted. She was constantly saving near falls on her Japanese teammates and even sacrificed herself, pushing Kyrie out the way to take a Charlotte Spear. That led to the end, where all the faces hit their finishers, with Becky pinning Bailey off a second rope manhandle slam through a table. I expect Bailey's theme song will soon become One of These Things Is Not Like The Other, because she's quickly becoming Sami Zayn in the Bloodline. The only other thing I wanted to note from this match is, uh, you know, I was right. I predicted a thing. Main roster trash can. She's gonna jump off the top of the, the cell in a trash can. This was a really good match to open the show. With the tag titles currently held up in the main event scene, the actual tag division is now being used exclusively for branded content integration. Alpha Academy and Pretty Deadly promoted Ruffles, which is where R-Truth made his return, and the New Day drove to the arena in a Slim Jim car. After not being beaten for two years, Gunther then defended his Intercontinental Championship against The Miz. It was like two clashing artistic styles occupying the same screen. Like The Miz had glitched into Gunther's dimension in Across the Spider-Verse. I watched it again yesterday, it's fresh in my memory. The king of sports entertainment soft style versus one of the hardest hitters of his generation. And... It was over relatively easily, barely an inconvenience. Miz would target Gunther's left knee for his figure four, and he managed a babyface low blow and exposed turnbuckle for one genuinely great near fall. But overall, this was a decisive filler victory in Gunther's longer reign. He hit a lariat and a splash, and then made Miz tap in the Boston Crab. A fun match, but it never reached that second gear to make it properly competitive. Santos Escobar versus Dragon Lee had some good back and forth action, with Santos bringing the intensity of his recent heel turn but ultimately, this was just another filler match. It wasn't even a proper grudge match, as Dragon Lee was neither of the two people Escobar actually has beef with, Carlito and Rey Mysterio. At seven minutes long, this was just a way to give Santos a pay-per-view win ahead of those bigger matches. And then we got Rhea Ripley defending her women's title against Zoe Stark, the third predictable pay-per-view filler match in a row. Zoe's physics-breaking offense is always fun to watch, but she was never a believable winner here, and the crowd only ever cheered Ripley. Rhea won with a riptide. In between these filler mid-card matches, the night-long narrative was would famed kayfabe dickhead Randy Orton actually show up and help his mates? Sami Zayn and Jey Uso said they'd have to have each other's backs no matter who turns up. Judgment Day gloated that even if Randy does show up, he'll probably turn heel on one of his teammates. And Seth kept 
shouting at Cody for updates. The Jeopardy felt somewhat forced, but at least they didn't just suddenly announce Adam Cole as his replacement. For the men's War Games match itself, Seth started for the babyfaces, with Cody, Jay and Sammy waiting in the cage, with Orton still not having appeared from out of somewhere. Bella started for Judgment Day, recalling his long and recent history with Rollins, while JD, Dominic, Priest and McIntyre watched from the ramp with palpable tension between Drew and Damian. The heels had the advantage, a far better working of psychology than the women's opener, meaning JD was in next, then Jey Uso with yeet chants from the crowd and evils from Drew McIntyre on every strike. Damian stopped McIntyre going out next, so consumed was he by hate for Jay, then it was Zayn, then Drew, then Cody, than Dominic, where the Chicago crowd wanted to boo him so much, they didn't even do the countdown. The match beyond had four faces against five heels, with still no sign of Randy. Seth started to shout at Cody. The numbers game got the better of the faces for Rhea's music to hit, trying to cash in Damien's Money in the Bank briefcase for him. But in an ingeniously plotted next beat, Orton's music hit. Fittingly, kind of from out of nowhere, for his full return. He, uh, he looks big. He's a big boy. Randy didn't really do much, but whatever limitations he has were protected by the spot he did. Masked by storyline tension with Jay, the man who injured him, hidden in a five-person draping DDT spot, and helped by Sammy and Seth throwing JD off the top of the cage for Randy to hit an RKO beneath. Orton gave Priest to his legacy protege Cody, who hit a crossroads to win. Because apparently it doesn't matter how many times you get pinned when you have the Money in the Bank briefcase. You had a perfectly good JD McDonough right there. Now, I didn't watch this live, so I could see there were five minutes left of the broadcast while all the faces were celebrating. Never trust a Triple H booked copyright logo. I thought Randy might turn on someone. Or maybe the Judgment Day would turn on Priest. Or maybe, but very, very unlikely, unlikely, we'd get... CM Punk return confirmed. Michael Cole was getting ready to throw to the post-show press conference when Cult of Personality hit. The crowd exploded, then they exploded even louder when Punk appeared in the entranceway, looking like he borrowed Brian Danielson's AEW debut outfit of a simple white tee. The whole place screamed, it's clobbering time, and a fan embraced Punk screaming, Chicago, 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 and staring right into the camera while Punk himself asked, Whose time is this? Coincidentally, at the same time, his old show collision would have been concluding on another station. Here's how everyone reacted at our watch party live stream. The, the logo's popped up, which as yeah, we know, doesn't necessarily that. mean it's the end Triple of the show. Love that. <laughs> The music is here. Oh, He's there. Oh, He's there. there. I cannot believe my eyes. The long arm has erupted. It is 3.50 in the morning here in London. But they can hear us in Chicago because CM Punk has just walked out into a WWE arena for the first time since 2014. I, um, yeah, I, uh, I think we can rule CM Punk out from being the devil. Punk then finished the broadcast by being cut off midway, going, oh, like it was Gary Neville watching a goal go in. Obviously, CM Punk is my favorite wrestler. I cried on air with overwhelmed joy when he returned to wrestling with AEW the, 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 the first time, not, not the second time. I imagine a lot of you want to know my thoughts on him coming back to WWE. And for you, I say, I don't know. I actually don't know right now. It feels a bit too soon, so I don't want to, like, really clarify how I'm going to feel in stone. But I'll tell you what I wrote in my notes as, as this was happening. My notes said, What a sellout. This doesn't feel the same as before. Because a huge part of my love for Punk was how he stood in opposition to a system and corporation I despised over that last decade. He was the voice of the voiceless, speaking up for a number of badly booked, mistreated wrestlers backstage, and hundreds of thousands of dissatisfied, frustrated fans at home, like me. People change. Companies change. And sometimes they do so 
inversely proportional to each other. While WWE under Triple H has become a hot promotion, Punk, with his backstage behavior in AEW, has been an increasingly difficult anti-establishment figure to follow. And in this act, returning to WWE, the company he stood up to in 2014, it feels as though Punk sold out. The TV will still be great, his performances will be captivating, particularly if he goes corporate heel, but the authenticity that I so loved him for right now feels compromised. But Ryback also tweeted he'd officially retire from pro wrestling if Punk returned at Survivor Series. So it's all good! CM Punk! CM Punk! CM Punk! Get some dumb as f Survivor Series was a mediocre main card, especially by Big Four standards, with an insanely hot closing angle. This was 80%. I actually predicted CM Punk coming into WWE to screw over AEW last year. Watch on to find out more.